Jesus mighty name. Please let's take our Bible in the book of 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16, we're going to read verse 29 through verses 33. 1 Kings chapter uh, uh, 16, reading from verses uh, 30, uh, 29 until verses uh, 33. 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 29 until verses 16. The Bible says, in the, third, in the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Became king over, everybody is standing for the reading of the word please. He became king over Israel and Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel and in Samaria 22 years. 30. Now Ahab son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. May I never come myself into that record of wrong. You just break record of all evil better than anybody else. So it came to pass as though it had not been enough. As though it had not been enough to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebath, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, the daughter of Ethbal. King of the Sidonian who went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made wooden image and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the things of Israel who were before him. Father, bless your word tonight. We are trusting to be fed by your word. We are trusting that your word will bring clarity. Let the authority of your word settle in our spirits, settle in this place. Father, everyone under the sound of my voice, May they be subjected to the anointing of God that will flow in this place, flow in this building. We block every evil antennas and demonic frequencies right now. They are jammed and they are arrested. Father, we speak and declare that the atmosphere is totally liberated. For the hearing of your word, the proclamation of your word, and the grace to deliver this word as you give it unto us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let me hear you say amen three times. Come on, one, amen. two and three amen. glory to god may you be seated in the presence of god friends and brothers it is once again a privilege for us to stand before you and we thank god for the amazing grace and the forever privilege we have to serve him and bringing the word of the lord we will never take this moment for granted it is always the grace of god that makes us uh, makes all things abound and which causes us every single day every single night to gather before the lord in prayer and believe that something glorious is in fact on the agenda for you and i in jesus name as I begin my teaching tonight, friends, please write this down. That behind every action, there is a spirit dominating. Behind every action, there is often a spirit dominating. Behind every action, one poses. There is often a spirit sieging over that individual. Behind every action, whenever you see someone do something, Whenever you see someone act in a certain way, you got to realize that behind such action, there is what? There is a spirit dominating that individual. And you have to realize that certain ways of living, certain uh, uh, character, certain way of behavior, it is not often just the, the, uh, the manifestation of a temper. It is not just the, 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 the situation that has gone crazy. It is often the manifestation of the spirit that dominates somebody's life. Somebody say amen. amen. It is necessary for you to realize that. Because for every dominion, for every kingship, for every rulership, there are signs and manifestations that follow such predisposition or such powers. 
before you can notice what is going on into somebody's life or before you can be able to know who rules and reigns in the life of a person, the first thing that you'll begin to realize is in the acts, the character of that individual. You will notice, beloved, that Bible says that there was a man that was filled with the spirit of infirmity. And the spirit of infirmity kept that person in a certain condition that the Bible said that woman could not be able to raise herself. The condition she had was not a medical condition. It was a condition that could have a medical explanation, but it was the result of a spiritual domination. It was a result of what? So when Jesus walks into the temple and he is ministering as I am ministering to you, that same spirit, it is that which will now manifest. And the Bible says that Jesus will rebuke that spirit when he rebukes that spirit, oh Lord. When he rebuked that spirit, the Bible said the woman who could not raise herself for 18 years, the woman that could not raise herself for how long? For how long? for 18 years was now able to walk why because the power over her life had had influence over her health and her, over her condition my prayer for you and i tonight is that any siege of spiritual forces that has imposed certain reality, certain things character-wise, certain things life-wise, whatever that is, it is my prayer that tonight the Lord shall be able to revoke such siege. I say it is my prayer that the Lord shall be able to revoke such a siege over your life. You have to realize... Has I introduced my message tonight. That whenever a throne is established, it is a dominion that has been commanded. Whenever a throne has been established, it is dominion that has been commanded. Which means that there is a certain influence. Everybody, please don't be distracted. There is a certain dominion that has been established. And when that dominion is established, friends, you come to a place, you come to a ground where there are certain things that you begin to see manifest and happen in that place. The Lord spoke to me last night as we finished service. And I want to start there because it is necessary. Because you will notice that there are certain complications that happens in marriage and relationship which are a direct situation not of misunderstandings but of the powers and the principalities dominating that marriage. There are certain conflicts that rises. It is not because you and I cannot get along. It is not because such and such thing cannot happen. The reason why such things are taking place, it is of the result of a certain principalities that are working on somebody else. I'm going to get there. But please write this down. When Daniel will pray, his prayer were not, the answers were not delivered, not because he did not pray hard enough, but because the principalities upon which he was sitting on, the powers upon which he was established, it was those power that did not allow such answers to come in his direction. I will tell you that there are grounds they are under the dominionship of certain principalities that if you enter into that place, even if you had money, you have to go out broke. There are certain powers that if you enter into a certain territory, because they are controlling the territory, it doesn't matter how well your marriage was doing. If you enter that space, your marriage has to fail. It is because of the powers, the principalities, the thrones that are in fact ruling and reigning in such place. That's the reason why in Ephesians chapter 6 the Bible says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against powers, we wrestle against thrones, we wrestle against principalities and all these things. The Bible said the rulers of the darkness of this age and against the spiritual horse in wicked, of wickedness, where? In the? 
There is a possibility for you to walk into an atmosphere and what was working fine start w- stop working. There is a possibility that, listen, you, you, you were living perfectly. Your kids were perfectly healthy. But as soon as you change neighborhood, everything begins to go sour. It is not you. It is the principalities in the heavenly places controlling such region. How many of you understand that by the virtue of the spirit, that there are certain spirits that are, 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 are location-based? There are spirits that are location-based. The Bible says when the, the crazy men of Gadanares, the, the Bible says when Jesus will rebuke the spirit, what will the spirit say? Please don't take us away from this place. Or then us to go even into the swine. Why is it because the spirit that was operating in those seasons or in, those, in that man were spirits that were location based in that area? Now the question you have to ask yourself, what is the spirit operating over my life? What is the dominion? Under, under whose influence is my life sitting on? Under whose dominion is my marriage sitting on? I am telling you there are certain things that happen in marriage. I was talking about marriage. In fact, I said there are certain reality concerning marriage. It is not a lack of misunderstanding. It's not, it's not a lack of understanding one another. But there is just a disagreement in the spirit that the principalities have been able to invoke over your life to the point that you cannot happen and the Lord told me that there are certain even importance that is a result of a stronghold over somebody's life there are certain frigidity that you will experience it is not a result of biology or some kind of medical issues but it is a result of a power that is operating over your life when the spirit does not want you to succeed in marriage it will cause all sorts of dramas for you to walk out of it and in fact, when you explain, everybody will say, yes, you are right to go out of it. Can I be able to move on? I say, can I be able to move on? Because there are people when they are under the siege of the powers such as the powers of the forest. Like a spirit that is location based is the forest. The spirit whose location base is the forest. The principalities whose location base is the forest. You will notice in this life, number one, a constant life of instability. A constant life of instability. You will notice that these people are often wanderers. They never settle. They are always wanderers. They never settle. You see them moving from house to house. You see them moving from place to place. There is a spirit of never settling. Because nobody settles in the bush. I mean, if you look at the animals, you will never tell that this animal, this is his house. If you're looking for this animal, this is where you will find him. They are constantly moving one place to another. Constantly moving one location to another. And it is a spirit that is linked with the spirit of bushes. Another thing that you will notice, friends, is that in the life of these people, there is often a violent temper issue. A violent temper issue. I mean, every single problem has to end up in physical altercation. These people can fight over food. They can fight over the fact that you didn't give them water. They can fight over the fact that you, 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 you took their pen without asking. There is a spirit of violence that is linked. This is the reason why this man that was living, listen, he was living in the, in the tombs. The Bible said there were no chains that they could be able to put on him that could tame him. Extra violence. Extra what? Are you here? Extra violence. Everything has to finish into a physical education. And there are many people whose life, whose reality of life is constantly ends in physical battle. There are people whose life is like a career of WWE. I mean, literally, they could take you and say, you fight too much. It is better that you, we, we just make you fight for life. There are certain people whose career should have been boxing. Because everything has to be always about, you know, you eating somebody. Listen, if you enjoy beating people, maybe your career shouldn't be what you are doing. But all of
of these things, it is the manifestation of the power and the spirit that is sieging over somebody's life. Oh, he has a temper issue. It is not a temper issue. It is the principality upon him that gives him that temper. Do you remember that Jesus will say to Peter, get he behind me, Satan. Meaning that Satan's words were found in Peter's mouth. So when Peter was speaking, it was not Peter, it was Satan. If Satan can infiltrate himself into the mouth of Peter, how much more about in your actions? That's the reason why it is necessary that you come out from the powers, from the principalities and the forces of darkness that are keeping you from doing what God has called you to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I read to us a certain portion of scripture concerning a man by the name of Ahab. By the name of Ahab. Ahab will become king over Israel and I told you that in the days of the Bible, the, king of Israel, the kingdom of Israel, if not the nation of Israel was divided into on, the si uh, 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 on one side, it was the kingdom of Judah. And on the other side, it was the race of Israel. Now, he was king over the kingdom of Israel. And this man, the Bible says that he did so much evil before the sight of the Lord as if that was not enough. He went and married a daughter of Ethbal. He went and married a daughter of Ethbal. I want you to just keep in mind that the name of this guy, the family name has behind it what? Baal. Baal is a divinity that was worshipped in those days. And it was not just a divinity, but it was an idol that man has been able to fabricate because of their belief that this was their real God. But let me tell you friends, the greatest mistake you will ever make is to think that you will change a person because you married them. Oh, I'll repeat it again. That the greatest mistake you can ever tell yourself or the greatest lie you can ever tell yourself is that I will change him. You have no power to change nobody. I say you have no power to change nobody. In, in fact, it is only God who can change a person. No, nobody has the power to change a human's heart. The Bible says the heart of man is beyond evil. Nobody can understand it. It means that even what you think is evil, it is just the tip of the iceberg. The man decided to marry this woman by the name of Jezebel, maybe in hopes that I am an Israelite and I will be able to change him. But before you realize, beloved, the Bible says, it is now the influence of Jezebel that will begin to work on the life of Ahab. And as a result... By the covenant of marriage, the Bible says it will number one raise an altar. A altar for who? An altar for Baal. What did you think will happen? You married the daughter of Ethbal. Everything in your life is going to be Baal, 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 Baal. And you have not been raised that way. You have not been raised to worship idols. You have not been raised to worship ancestors. You have not been raised to worship foreign gods. You have been raised to worship the living God but yet what is that thing that makes you go and turn the covenant of marriage so the man went up and raised an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal which himself built in Samaria himself built way he built in Samaria can you imagine you were raised better than that. And nobody could be able to determine that in the way that people raise you, you could one day sponsor the worship of idols. The man, he said, we don't need to go there. They can come here. We don't need to travel in a foreign land. We can come here. We don't have to go far to worship their God. We can worship them here. And all of that, my God, was the result of a certain influence upon his life. That's the reason why I tell you people don't just change. It is the influence that changes on them. 
You see a person that used to be very obedient and all of a sudden the person becomes rebellious. It is not the person that's changed. It is the influence that changed over their lives. Check who is their influence. A kid used to speak to you very respectfully. They used to behave a certain way. And all of a sudden they go against all the values that you have taught them. Check who is their influence. Who has become their idol? Who has become their idol? Who are they watching? We heard the testimony of Peter the other day. You know when he talked to us about what the Lord has been able to do in his life. You will notice that everything that he was doing was a result of somebody that he identified as an idol. Ask your neighbor, who's your influence? Or you're too quiet. And some of you didn't want to look at the other way. Who is your influence? Who do you want to be like? Who are you listening to? The man decided that he will raise an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal. But beyond it, he goes and builds the temple of Baal in the land where he's staying, Samaria, and raise in that place a temple of Baal. It was not a matter of this man has changed. It is the influence over his life that changed. So when the influence changes, therefore, the enemy finds a way to enforce his agenda. He finds a way to do what? To enforce his agenda. What was his agenda? To turn away the heart of Israel from the living God to the God of idols. The agenda of the enemy has always been to take your heart away from God into the eyes of idols how will he going to do that he made sure that he married a daughter of the princesses of Baal so the marriage happens and everything goes on but what Ahab doesn't know is that he will no longer be king because the higher power will control things <laughs> I want to advise you brothers in this church since you are sons and daughters and since you are sons in this house let me tell you for free never let your wife become more spiritual than you amen brothers oh me you know it is business you know prayer it's mama mama is the one that is taking charge listen God's order does not see in your house a woman ruling your spiritual life. Did you hear what I said? In your house, your priest, where did I say? In your, did I say here? Where did I say? Because I know. In your house, your wife, is not supposed to be the one that is holding the ark. Oh, me, you know, my wife prayed too much. You know, my wife prayed too much. Brothers, what are you doing? Wake up and pray. Oh, me, you know, I, 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 I support the work. You know, the prayer, you know, my, my mama does it better. Mama does it better. Beloved, you will wake up one day and you don't know in whose house you entered. I bless God for the mothers that pray. I bless God for the women that are awakened in prayer. But thank God for your awakening prayer. But your greatest prayer point is, Father, let my husband rise in prayer. Let my husband become a prayer warrior. Let his eyes open in the spirit. Father, cause an appetite, a desire for him to seek after you. Father, raise a man. Listen, when a man joins a church, there are more chances for the entire family to join that church. But when a woman joins the church, it can take even 10 years. The husband will just be, I am visiting. But when daddy comes to church, it is mama will come to church. The children will come to church. Nobody will stay home watching TV when daddy says we are going home. 
me hear the brother say amen to this. We are living, unfortunately, Papa Shaq, into a time and into a season when the devil wants to emasculate men, remove their authority, remove their role, remove their power, and to the point that he let every is a lie. I said to come out of all that come out of alignment so that the fathers cannot be the role model of the spiritual journey of their children. How does a father lead his not son, not lead his son to Jesus? How does a son not lead his children into the ways of the Lord? And if the father cannot do it, I am telling you, the mother will fight. The mother will beat. The mother will do whatever it is. But it is better. It is easier when the father stand with his natural authority and say all of us we are fasting this week this thing of you letting mama fast because you they have to make pop for you this is what is going to happen because a man decided, this woman is too spiritual, let her lead. Now the thing about spirituality, minister, is that you trust the instinct of the person that is always right. So, my wife advice. And you know this thing about marriage, is the influence. They can just come and say, you know, what do you think these days? I am not comfortable, eh? you know. We have been giving too much money to churches these days, you know, to the point that, you know, when was the last time you bought me a bag? When was the last time you took me on a holiday? Small conversation like that. And all of a sudden, a man that you used to see serve God so powerfully with their resources, with their funding, and all of a sudden, you start seeing them slow down. Why? Because there is a certain influence that marriages carry to the point that this man will begin to raise what? Others. Minister, it always begins like, you know, anyway, it is the same God we are praying now. The same God. If you checked, as the Spirit testified to you, it's the same God. Now let us also go and visit this church. Ah. And there you go. Since yourself you are not settled in your spirituality. How can you be able to navigate? I'll get, I'll get it. It's fine. How, do you, how are you able to navigate when you are being misled? How? how? A blind man doctor cannot... Be able to tell if they are in the wrong way. They can only trust the one that is leading them. Now, if you as a man, you have become spiritually blind. And now you have to trust your wife to lead you. I say again, thank God for the praying women. But my greatest prayer is that your man shall come unto God. His heart shall be given unto God. That the thing of the prayer should not be, mama is the one that is taking care of it. The office of prayer should be men. There are certain issues in my house. My mother will say, ah, Papa, you're the one that will go talk to your kids about it. Because she understands that there is a certain authority a father carries. Now, we are living in a situation in a life where they have made it okay. Look at how many mamas we have here. And those that have been here since the first day, where are the fathers? We are busy making money. You know, we will come and support. You know, there's too much work outside there. We have to work. It is a lie from the pit of hell. And before you know it, the council of Jezebel will begin to rule. And before you know it, what you never thought you could do in your life, you begin to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me hear say better amen. That was just a bracket speaking to you as a father to this house. Men of the house wake up in prayer. No more excuses. 
men of honor, it is not just there as a social gathering. It is there to train us into the art of spiritual warfare. It is there to make us stand as men of character, models for our family. Men of honor, it is not just a department where we gather and discuss about what business deal are we going to do. No, men of honor is also there to teach us the power of prayer. What happens when men pray? What happens when men pray? I understand the power of wailing, wailing women. But do you know the power of praying men? Jeremiah says, call unto me the people that are crying. Call unto me the wailing women. Let them raise a voice. Do you understand the power of wailing women? But do you know the power of a praying man? Minister Treasure, I feel like this thing is so deep in my spirit. Jacob has a wife by the name of Rachel. Rachel, before she gave birth to her last born, she gave his name, Benoni. What did she call him? Benoni. What did she say? This is the son of my sorrow. She called her child bitterness. The father comes, please stand. It says, you are born, you have birthed this child, but I carry the responsibility to name the child. So the father says, this will not be Benoni, but this child shall be Benjamin. But listen, minister, where there was a father to change Benoni to Benjamin, Jabez, oh my God, Jabez had not had somebody. He had a mother that called him sorrow. And said, because I bore him in pain. But because he lacked a father. Ah, the Bible says, he will be exceedingly great. He will be honorable. But something deep within was telling him there is something wrong with you. Because there was not a father when he was being called Benoni. Who could change his name and say, you are not Jabez. He said, Lord, if you will deliver me indeed. That I may not cause pain anymore. Man, where are you? Who is giving names to your kids? Who is calling out their destiny? Who is speaking over their lives? Man, where are you? The destiny of your kids are now in the hands of your wife. Your wife has already labored. She carried that child nine months. She delivered that baby. You have the duty to detect and determine that that child's destiny is preserved. Benjamin will never be called another day Benoni. Because the voice of the father stood and said, My son, you are everything but pain. You are everything but pain. Now, when you have a father who cannot have revelation, your entire life, Benoni, 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 Benoni. Who is that child that is not born in pain? Tell me, since the days of Adam and Eve. Who is that child that is never born in pain? I understand medical technology has advanced and they give you whatever uh, kind of uh, uh, injection. But before the injection come, you will feel the pain. But the mother giving up a ghost says, I name him Benoni. But the father will stand. And say, this is not Benoni. This is Benjamin. May the Lord raise a father generation in this house. Of men and women that shall not come out of their strategic position. I said again, men take charge. What did I say? 
man take charge. There is an increasing grace on this altar of women serving God in this church. I, I, I sometimes ask myself that the Lord give me grace to just raise daughters of fire and that men are not catching that fire. You bring Mama View on this pulpit, fire. You, you bring Sister Gaila, fire. You bring Mama get fire. You bring prophetess, fire. You bring all of them, fire. And then, I'm looking, who's next? Who is that brother who will catch this fire? No, pastor, you know, we are, these days, you know, you will smile very soon, pastor. You will smile very soon. Am I talking to somebody? I know the way you always, you know, try. I say, this week, you are doing the work. You, you are doing the, ah, pastor, you know, these things, <laughs> pastor, pastor. Men of Rama. This was not my message. I said again, men of Rama. It is time for you to rise. Papa Jacques, I'm giving you all the ammunition for you to go after them. You just begin to cut short, short what I've said tonight. You begin to send it in the group. Say, Pastor said, we have to rise. We have to rise. It's not my word. Pastor said, we have to rise. Somebody say, we are men of prayer. Let the men say, we are men of prayer. Mm -hmm. So, this woman by the name of Jezebel, because she found a gap, because she found what? Because she found a gap in the spirituality of her husband, she will begin to introduce foreign God. Because that agenda and the will of the, of the Jezebelic spirits is to make sure that the people are turned away from their God. The people are? Yes, turned away from their God. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one that gave you power to get wealth. Remember the Lord your God. He's the one that delivered you from affliction. Remember the Lord your God. He's the one that brought you out of slavery. Remember the Lord your God. But when you don't remember, your hearts will be turned away to other gods. Who introduced you to a new God and makes you forget all that your God has done for you? I have sometimes understand what kind of amnesia did the Israelite had that every time, every time, every time, every time they had forgotten that this God brought them out of 400 years of slavery. What kind of amnesia that makes you forget that you walk on dry foot in the midst of a Red Sea? You are seeing water in every side, but you are not getting wet. Your feet are not getting wet. You walk out and you see Pharaoh, the mighty Pharaoh, getting, 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 uh, uh, what's the word? Get, getting drowned into the sea. Miriam burst into singing. She did not have to wait for choir rehearsal. She started singing prophetic songs. She took a tambourine, started praising God, and the entire Israel trained her into praise because they understood the mighty things God has done. But tell me, how do you go from praising and repeating that story to your generations until that story is no more resounding in their mind that this God I can doubt him? You know, we ought to tell our kids where we come from and what our God has been able to do so that when they grow up, they will know that it was not our intelligence and just our human wisdom. Pit, kid, you got to realize that if I am where I am, it's prayer. We don't do mutis, we do prayer. We don't burn incense, we do prayer. Kids, I don't care what kind of opportunity we will have in life, but if you see me where I am today, it is by what? Because in failure to do so, tomorrow you will see your kids becoming Hindus. How did they become Hindus? It is because what they are told is greater than what you told them. 
They needed to repeat to the children of Israelites how the Lord delivered them out of the Red Sea, out of slavery, so that they never forget where they come from. There is this power line in the Lion King that will say to Simba, always remember where you come from. Now, your heart can only be turned away when you forget who's this God you walked with. Out of everything God has done for you, and you wake up tomorrow, I am a Muslim. Before we pray for you, we're gonna, we have to slap you two or three times at least. Because we have seen how God has taken you from a nobody. There are certain things that it gives no reason for us to be able to understand. Or, or no, you know, I have gone through so much. No, no, we will not understand. Let us beat you at least two or three times so that your mind can gather up. How do, you, how do you overnight wake up and deny the existence of God? There are certain people before you can debate, just slap them two or three times. Remember where you come from. You are not here because of all these things that you are telling yourself. The Bible says, and then the heart of the people were turned away. And all of a sudden, you now lead a confused generation. You're leading what? A confused generation because it is Elijah that will stand before the people and say, how long will you falter between two opinions? Today it is God, tomorrow it's not another God. Today is Jehovah, tomorrow is another God. How long are you going to be between two gods? He says, if you have made up your mind that Baal is God, follow him. But if it is God, Jehovah, who is God, make sure you bow before him. Because the word side, oh my God. The worst side effect of confusion is non-decisiveness. The worst side of confusion. The worst side effect of confusion is not being able to choose at all. Mini, 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 moon. And then you pick, and then you're like, uh, uh maybe it was not the right one. And then you start again. You change the song, thinking that it will change the outcome. And ultimately, you end up not choosing at all. A confused person never moves. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? A confused person never. Let me wrap it up. The reign of Jezebel has to be overturned because it, it targeting the hearts of the people. It targets what? You know, we can always change your ideology, but to change your heart. Is harder than changing your ideology. When your heart has been turned away, it is complex to bring it back. And secondly, the agenda of Jezebel was to persecute those who stood for God. To persecute those who did what? Now let me tell you the, 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 the worst kind of example. Acts chapter 12, please. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, now about that time, Hero the king stretched out his hands to harass some from the church. Then he killed who? The brother of John with the sword. Three. Let's read one, two, three. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was the during the days of the unleavened bread. He started this adventure 
when he saw how happy people were because the children of God were being persecuted, because he saw how the children of God were being ostracized, the joy it brought. Let me tell you that there are people who are happy when the church is persecuted. There are people who are happy when the church goes through trauma. There are people who are happy when the house of God goes through shame. And I forbid you, please, you sons and daughters of this house, to ever share anything that puts shame on the house of God. Not necessarily this house, but on the body of Christ. We have no right because there are many who are making of this work a mockery. When there is a scandal, a pastor has been caught in this, a church has been done this, and so forth and so on. Whether this is true or false, the enemy is happy of these things happening. You do not know the kind of joy it brings to them to know that the church is a laughing stock. It brought so much joy. It pleased the Jews. He started with James. Maybe his purpose was to stop at James. But because of the joy it brought, it says, let me bring them to the climax. Let me take the apostle of the New Testament, Peter. Because Peter is the one that will preach the inaugural service of the New Testament church. The first ever service of the church in the New Testament was preached by Peter. And because of that, he said, let me just carry the head. And finish this thing once and for all. It is the spirit of Jezebel to always target the head. That's the reason why protect your head. Protect. 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 The spirit of Jezebel started head hunting the prophet of the living God. Killing them. Doing a massacre. And it brought us so much joy. She, it, she became famous. And you know the rule of the enemy. How does he enforce his power? It is by instilling fear. When you become afraid of the enemy, that's the power he has. Oh, I will tell you again. When you are afraid of the enemy, that is the power he has over you. So what does he do? There is a lot of intimidation. He kills people around you. What do you have as choice? By the time they just point at you, you already bowed before they said anything. I remember of this prank that was going on during the days of COVID. And then there's this guy that has his friends who does not wear a mask. And then he's pretending to be a security guard. So what he does is that his friends who forgets to wear a mask, passes by, and then he takes a whoop, he beats his friends. And then everybody that was coming after his friends without wearing a mask, start fixing the mask. Because his power, his authority, it is to do what? Instill fear. So that you are like, what happened to him is going to happen to me. Let me correct myself now. And the agenda of Baal and through the spirit of Jezebel is to instill intimidation in the house of the saints. The Bible says what? Resist the devil and he shall flee. There is no amount of intimidation that shall move us. There is no amount of intimidation that shall move us out of the purposes of God. He has killed. Listen, she had killed many prophets of Baal. But there was one bold by the name of Elijah. He went to the house. Oh my God. Where they are killing others, the Lord said, go knock at that door. <laughs> you, you, you see, there, there are certain things that speaks of your strength without you fighting. Where everybody is running from, you come and say, I heard you were looking for me. I heard you were looking for me. Elijah, the Lord says to him, go to Ahab and say, God, how can I go there? They are looking for me. I am a wanted person. It is the only me that they are looking for. If they kill me, it is over. God says, go. They will not kill you. He goes to Ahab and say, 
to her because you have acted in this way. There shall not be any rain or dew against, as, except of my word. And the Bible said there was no rain. And after that, he summoned the entire nation to the mountain of Carmel. When he summons the entire nation of the Carmel, it is where you really see the power of decision. May the Lord raise men and women that are fearless in this generation. I say, may the Lord raise men and women that are fearless in this generation. Because the purpose of the spirit of Jezebel is to shut the true voices of God. They will leave all the nonsense, but the true voices of God, they want to shut down. They want to do what? To shut down. That's the reason why I pray for all of us that are I, I take a techie service and, and, and you, you are inclined into technology, computing and stuff like that. This is the time for you to start thinking, how do we bypass these social media things? Because one day they just say, no more preaching on Facebook. Now today you are watching me on YouTube. What will happen? Amen, somebody. Because the purpose of this agenda is to shut down the true voices of God. That's the reason why she started at hunting all the true prophet of God. When finally in Acts chapter 19, or rather chapter 18, the Bible says when she finally uh, 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 started hunting and doing all that was going to be happening, look, the Bible says that it happened that the Lord will say to uh, Elijah that you are not the only one that is left. I have kept for myself. I have kept for myself prophets that have not yet bowed, that have not yet bowed, the Bible says that have not yet bowed to Baal. While he was thinking to be alone, the Lord has kept, the Lord has, the Lord has, the Lord has kept. What does that mean? It means that if everybody gets rotten, God has sold those that have not yet been rotten. If everybody is getting corrupted, you must know that there is a rest. Somebody said there's a rest. Stop generalizing everything. God always have exception in every generation. Stop putting a blanket on everything that is going on and say the church, the church, the church. God has a rest. God has a rest. Because the purpose of this kingdom is to shut down the voices of God. In this season, beloved, anything that wants to shut the voice of God over your life, what will you be with that that says the Lord? What will you be with that what the Spirit of God is saying to the church? What will you be with that the word that has been made manifested, the word that became flesh? What will you be with that the word that is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path? What will you be with that the word that is the bread of life? What will you be with that the word that is, 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 in fact, the sword of the Spirit? What will you be? And the enemy knows that your strength is in the word. And he wants to shut down the power that is in the word. And tonight, we are here to overturn every Jezebelic spirit operating under this generation, under our houses, under our homes, uh, and under our ministry. That in this season, every throne sponsored by Jezebel must be overturned in Jesus' mighty name. Did I speak to somebody tonight? I said, did I speak to somebody tonight? Clap your hand where you are in the presence of the Lord. Come on.